at last count when I did my files the other day, my price list, I think I have 450 different yarns. <gasps> I think that's enough. Hello. Good to meet you both. Um, we are here in Stockbridge, Matthew. No. no, we are not in Stockbridge. Ooh, where are we? Great Barrington. Great Barrington. Oh, okay. Stockbridge Road. Stockbridge Road. Yes. Got it. Um, okay, so we are here on Stockbridge Road in Great Barrington at Wonderful Things. And I am sitting with... Harry and Deb. Harry and Deb. And you are the owners of this lovely Wonderful Things? Yes. Wonderful. And how long have you been here for? 45 years. 45 years! <laughs> so what brought you to this wonderful part of the world and opening a yarn shop? What's the history? He was a teacher. Okay. He relocated from New Hampshire for a teaching job down here. And I was in the right place at the right time and met a couple who wanted to open up a store. And here we are. And the rest is his, knitting history. <laughs> That's right. Well, we haven't always been this much of a knitting store. It, to begin with, we were an all-purpose craft store. Before you had things like Michaels and yep. Zayas and Joann's, we had all of that stuff. And as they came in, we got rid of it. And oh. the yarn has just mushroomed. Yeah. I'd say blossomed. Well, <laughs> <either> <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yep. Right. <laughs> no, but but that's true. I mean, your selection, and we'll do a tour, but the selection is immense. So how did you, I mean, was it always this large of a selection? Or over time, I guess you said it's blossomed. So how, how has that evolved over the years? Hmm. We started just, small and started just small. kept adding. Right. We yeah. went where the demand was. Okay. I mean, we had we had dollhouse building stuff for a lot of ah, years. Okay. We still have caning and we still have some needlework, but it just kind of evolved as to where the need was, where the wants yep. were, and people from Boston, from New York, all over, they were tired of your fancies, you know, yarns. Mm. They wanted basics. Yep. They wanted good wool basics. And so you have, I mean, 45 years, you have seen the market go through its ebbs and flows and trends. And so what is it about now, would you say, compared to years past that maybe makes it different or the same? Or what are just some observations you have, you know, being it's in very the different. business for so long? It's very different. Uh, I want to be nice. <laughs> in some cases it's almost a dog eat dog world mm. the yarn companies some of them are not very nice there are some that mm. I will not deal with because of their business practices mm. uh, competition is unbelievable mm. um, the internet makes a difference most particularly when some of the yarn companies sell off their website which I think is does not help mm. the local yarn store yeah. As you look at today's world where there seems to have been this um, impetus around indie dyers and, you know, hand spun and, um, you know, people becoming more interested in where their yarn comes from and, you know, the stories behind it, you know, is that something that, you know, you're looking at as well and, and trying to look at more indie dyers or smaller companies? Like you said, you sound like there's a, a nice, we, we want to deal with I nice look at people. Them all. You look at them all, which is but great. And that, that, that makes you We do not more diverse. go to TNA. We don't go. We used to go to the Sturbridge show. Uh, I, ha I have a thing about that. I'd rather stay here mm -hmm. and, and spend my money on yarn than spend it on a trip. Yeah. I rely very heavily on uh, our sales, sales reps yeah. who come out mm. two or three times a year. Very interesting when we first opened back in the 70s. Uh, where's the Berkshires? Nobody, <laughs> there's no, nothing out here. Nobody wants to come out here. Why should we come out here? Well, guess what? <laughs> they all come out now with a couple of exceptions. And I don't really need them. I have enough yarns. I oh, think yeah. I've got... 
at last count when I did my files the other day, my price list, I think I have 450 different yarns. <gasps> I think that's enough. 450 different mm -hmm. yarns. Oh my God. And, and do you- We had more. You had more than that. Yeah. We had, we're up to six, 600 at one time. Wow. That's immense. <laughs> I mean, and you care, I, I was looking around just briefly. I mean, all weights and I, I mean, there's no discriminating here. You really run the spectrum in terms of- What we of, like. Uh, do not buy anything we do not like. And, and that includes the people that you're working with. It sounds like it's very much part of the business. You want to make sure that you know the the companies you deal with are ones that also care about their oh, yes, customer base definitely. and yep. um, you know are are here for the long haul and have sustainable business practices and how they deal mm -hmm. with their I've counterparties. And I've yeah. seen a lot of them start off down here, yeah, and they've slowly risen to the top. Mm. Some of them have gotten to the top and they're boom. Uh, one company in particular, and I won't mention names, right. is bringing everything in from China, mm. and I refuse to, to buy. Right. I have a lot of customers who will not buy from China. Yeah. Because, I mean, also it's about quality, too. That's right. I mean, it's all intertwined. It's the quality control. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I've, even on my needles, I've, had, I've carried a lot of needles. The minute they go into discount houses, they lose their quality control. Yep. And that's when I mm, close them out. Yeah. No. And I mean, that's imp it's, it's sometimes hard to to make those kinds of business decisions. But sometimes it's really easy to make those kinds of business <laughs> decisions. And, well, yeah. If you made it to the orphanage, which I'm sure he oh, we're gonna have to look at the orphanage, right? <laughs> uh, my philosophy is because I, I have everything computerized. Okay. So I can keep track. Right. And if it has sat on my shelves more than two years without carrying its own weight, guess what? Goodbye. Yep. It's in the orphanage. Yep. And and so I mean that sounds like what's it's you know, the 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 business savvy, that that ability to um take stock of the market, take stock of your shop. But what over the long run this whole time do you think has led to your success and your ability to to persist and and serve this really important market and, and be around for your customers. Our customers. Yeah. We're, we're good yeah. to the customers. Yeah. I mean, that's why we have this table. Everybody, some yes. days it's full, some days it isn't. Uh -huh. Some days we have excellent uh, conversations, discussions. Yes. Um, you never know. Some people <laughs> say, is this really a yarn store, what you're talking about? You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's so much hatred mm. in the world today. Yeah. Knitting is supposed to be fun. Yeah. It's a social activity. Uh, we found this out basically 9-11. And because mm. we have so many people from, from New York and that area, uh, I was amazed at the phone calls, the emails that we got from customers. We're okay. We'll see you this weekend. Oh. People who came up for the weekend. People yeah. who just had to get out of New York. And they all came. This is their refuge. Yeah. Yeah. And this is when they realized that um, electronics is not enough. No. You have to have the human contact. That's why the knitting groups yes. you know, all sprouted up at that time. And, and it's it's so true because especially today and there's so there there's so little of that kind of tactile it, it's something about knitting and and I can tell you a little bit about why I got into it but there's something about knitting with you know that that tactile that real sense of connecting to making something and also the community that um, it fosters mm -hmm. and because it, it's natural, it's an extension of the craft where you're talking to people about their patterns and what they're knitting and mm -hmm. why they're knitting it and, and what they have to frog and you know, what, what the, what the hangups are and you can all kind of come together around the craft in a really unique mm -hmm. way. Um, and, and that's certainly what, what 
makes me stick with it even through the most stressful of, of times. And I, I live in, in Manhattan and I, I work in finance and it's extremely stressful <laughs> most <Yes>. of the time. <laughs> and this has been a game changer in terms of how, you know, I personally, um, uh, I, I guess how I address my stress um, oh, yeah. and, mm. and how, you know, I am able to come to the other side of a really difficult period. And I think it, it's not just unique to my personal experience. I know it can be something in a really acute moment or over time, just in, in work life and, and all of those it's things. It's one of the best therapies around. Yes. Uh, before I get into this, I was an occupational therapist, ah, okay. which is why I've had all of this. But I also started knitting at 10. The first thing I ever did was a pair of Argyle socks, believe it or not. And childhood dream. Here it is. <gasps> Dreams do come true. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, That's wonderful. Went through and brought up four girls. Wow. One of which, our youngest of which is a handicapper, but she's wonderful. Mm. You know, she can take care of herself physically, but say, say la vie, it's life. We got wonderful grandchildren oh, wow. who love to come out here and spend time with Grammy and Grampy. And are they learning to knit? They all do. <gasps> they all know how to knit. Yep. Do you we have anything from, to do with it? From, They're going to be knitters. <laughs> we got them from 25 down to eight, 16. And they all wow. knit. And and did your parents and grandparents also knit? No. Nobody did you knit. did you start the, the lineage of I knitting? Did. This yep. is My sister started when she was in college, and she's the one who got me going on the socks. Never picked up a needle, knitting needle after that. <gasps> and I never put them down. That's funny how <laughs> things work like that, right? I mean, yeah. to me, it was a godsend because he went to school and worked nights. So I was uh -huh. alone with the kids. Harry, you do know. you knit? Of course, I teach knitting. You do teach knitting. Absolutely. We love men who knit. <laughs> I have a fellow who works for me who knits. He does beautiful knitting. Uh, His problem, like a lot of people, he doesn't like to finish things. Ah, uh, I know. <laughs> It's also such a reflection of one's mental, or at least for me, sometimes my mental state, how many projects I have going at one time. If I'm feeling frenzied and scatterbrained, I have a lot of projects. So. Well, I've heard that if you can count the number of UFOs you have, it's time to start another one. Yeah. I like that policy. <laughs> I might need to adopt that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So, I mean, it, this is fascinating and, you know, I could, I could just talk to you guys for, for hours, but, you know, I think there are people who are out there contemplating, you know, maybe I can get into the yarn industry or start my own yarn shop and, and have... Make me an offer. Yeah. <laughs> so what would your advice or just, you know, or words of in wisdom... This day, in this day and age, <laughs> yeah. it's tough. Yeah. I would not start it today. Mm -hmm. There are too many places going out. That's part of the reason we can still be here. Plus the fact we own the building. Mm. Oh, that makes a big makes difference. Makes a big difference. Yeah. Couldn't pay rent on this. Yeah, this you is know. a huge space. And mm. we have we have four apartments and we have wonderful tenants. Mm. Uh, they are all South American. Wow. They're all guys. Great. And they would all do anything that we asked them to do. Mm, yeah. <laughs> as, as one of them said to me, you do us a favor, we do you a favor. Yeah. But that's the way we run it. Yeah. Good people here. <laughs> we try. <laughs> um, you didn't, you like didn't show her my needles. What? No, get there. Make well, that was going to be shift. my next segment here. I, I want to. Well, I want to take a tour, but any highlights you want to um, you want to showcase from from your from your shop? Any particular, you know, well, objects or Jack yarns of, or Jack of all trades over here. He makes the drums. They're made from recycled <gasps> These propane drums. tanks. And look at the kitty. He's right here. Yeah. You made these. <gasps> They'll be featured in the ad in one of our, um, the Berkshire Times magazine that we advertise in. He also does knitting needles. He Let's also see. does the wooden swifts, which you want. You make these knitting needles here. Yep. <gasps> Can you see those? That's Sven. 
It's what? This is Sven. I don't know what that is. He's a Norwegian oh, ball so winder. <gasps> wow. That's why the hole makes it into a ball winder. Wait, wait. So what? how does this work? You put your yarn through. Okay. Then you whip it up into a ball <gasps> from a skein. Oh, you hand wind yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. So that's Sven, okay? Sven, okay. <laughs> And Got then it. when you pull it off, you can pull it right from the middle. It pulls from the middle. Yes. That is, I'm gonna, okay, that's that's one of my stops. That's before another I leave. 35 needle. Wow. Why the square end? Yeah, why? You ever chase a needle across the table? Oh, every day of my life. <laughs> you just don't do that. <laughs> so smart. And I those, love this. His needles came about back in 04. 04, yeah when the scarf craze was so big sorry and when the what this the was scarf, pre the oh scarf. the scarf the scarf okay All yeah everyone the was doing scarves were done on 17 needles at that time the only size 17 needle you could get was a 29 inch circular oh and i said to him uh that's not gonna fly yeah i need some number 17 needles ah so he made them that's incredible. Okay. Um, yeah, other things that are unique to the shop for the Swift. The Swift. Swift. Oh, Dude, let's look at the Swift. We have a vertical Swift. It's a copy of your uh, shaker. This is another drum right here. <gasps> How cool is that? Okay. This. Oh my gosh. What? These are. You take your. You put your skinny yarn on uh-huh put this back on get out pull the other one put it back on then you can wind it <gasps> and then wow howdy hello hello, hello. <laughs> that's incredible and so the different you can do different heights for that oh, oh yeah it's okay it's all show her how it's, it's all, adjustable on yeah this how does how does that um you just this bottom one, you see, yeah. comes out, and you can uh, move it to... See, this hole's all up and down. Right. Yes. Right there. Okay. Hello. Wow. But see, he bought me one, an antique one right. for Christmas one year. Now, are these how they were back in the day? Or, or oh, yeah. like, shaker. this is... This these is are a shaker. The sh oh, okay. The okay. Shaker. I need to become more educated on these yeah. things. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> but this is... You're not, not anywhere near as old as we are. <laughs> This is she wonderful. reads a lot. We could get her a nice bookmark. The shaker okay. He bought me an antique. Let's look at because he's yeah. a retired shop teacher. Yeah. He he refinished it and fixed it up for me. Uh. Wanted to bring it in here, and I said, No. You want them, you make them. There you go. <laughs> so he does. So he does. Okay, yep. I'm gonna close out. Um, we're getting okay. busy here today. So, um, Christy, whose podcast this is, um, she likes to close out with. Uh, a few, uh, you know, fire away questions. Um, so I'm just gonna ask you. Uh, you can respond together however you want. So the first question is knit or crochet? Knit. knit. <laughs> she crochets. Them. Oh, you can. Oh, okay. She's... Well, we'll have to see some of that too. Yeah. Uh, spin or weave? Weave. Weave. Okay. I have a loom. You have a. Do you have any weaving materials here? No. Okay, this is, this is separate. Um, uh, what are the other ones? Uh, fingering or bulky? Fingering. <laughs> fingering bulky. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what are the other ones? Uh, socks or sweater? Both. Both. Both? Okay, that's fair. Um, Complicated. I cannot stand to do just a plain stocking. Just stocking at it's no. just yeah, the mind numbing. People laugh at me because you have do you have to do the most complicated exactly. patterns. Okay, lace you would yeah. do lace and all. Okay, oh, that brown one over there. Yeah, yeah. the pink no. one too. That's both lace. Yep. Wow. Wow. Um, okay, what are the other ones she has? I should really have this memorized. Um, alpaca or sorry, uh, yeah, alpaca or cashmere. Alpaca. Me too. I like alpaca too. Yeah. It's better on the pocketbook. Yes. A lot yeah. better on the pocketbook. Yes. And I find that alpacas and lamb's wool, if you have, live in any place that has moths, those are the two fibers that the moths oh. go after. 
cashmere and cashmere and lamb's wool. And lamb's wool. Okay. I hate to tell you how many people bring in a cashmere sweater that's got all these other things. Oh yeah. yeah. Good to know. Okay. Mm. Um, clothes. Throw throw clothes in it instead of people who use mothballs. What's the best them. way to keep from moth moths uh, moth holes from happening? Throw whole cloves. Oh, cloves. Oh, okay, whole yeah. cloves. Whole and, cloves. Or okay. cinnamon sticks. Or cinnamon sticks. Yeah, you and you'll have a very fragrant garment. <laughs> okay. Better than mothballs. Yeah, this is true. Um, I think one of the last questions is, what is your favorite project of all time? Wow. Yeah. Hmm. This is oh, a toughie. I know what it was. Do you have it? I do. I have a picture of it. I did. Okay. We can, we can show the, the picture. I did the octagonal skirt that was in Vogue a number of years ago. <laughs> oh, this, the skirt? <gasps> yep. You're kidding. Oh. Oh? How long did this take you? A couple months. Only a couple months? Yeah. That's... You forget. She's fanatic. I mean... <laughs> but I would, I would take my basket. That's all sock yarn. All sock yarn. Yep. And I go around and I just pull oh, colors. Gosh. Then I take it home and lay it out and on my lay floor out. and put back the colors I didn't want. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Wow. I'm my And she still has away. it. She, I mean, I'd hope so. She mm -hmm. has everything you made. I'd oh. hope so. Yeah, the other one was a sweater I made 1980. Came out of Vogue. Okay. Done in um, a lace weight. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was the uh, kid silk okay. type. Oh my gosh! And it was yeah. a crop jacket mm -hmm. with the leg gosh. of mutton, leg of mutton sleeves. You know, with the leg of mutton sleeve. Where you're, you're tight up tight. to the elbow. Oh, I love those. And then billowy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like and those. Okay. Stand up collar. <gasps> Wait, with 550 sounds... seed pearls sewn on, on top oh, of it when my. it was done. That's incredible. And this is kid silk, you were saying? Oh, my God. Harry, but how about you? What's your favorite uh, project of all time? <laughs> no pressure. Let's see. Um, I would say my Tyrolean hat. Do you have it here? No. Okay. I put that home in my closet. You, so you, you made... I felted it. Felted the hat. Yeah, that's when I started knitting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. I made, uh, made three of them and shrunk them. Two of them down to a kid's size. So our grandkids had grandson to have them. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't uh, like them. <laughs> uh, it all <laughs> and then I guess the, the last question that that this is my kind of question, and this is you know uh, I I came to knitting um, because it just as I said just helped me with dealing with life circumstances and just becoming, I hope, a, a better person um, to the people who are around me. So I, I guess my question is, you know, what is it about knitting that, you know, kind of helps you be be your best self and helps you with your well-being and ability to take care of others? It's my therapy. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's relaxing. Yeah. Uh, but it also keeps the mind active. Yes. You have to, mm. which is why, you know, I like to do major projects. And I, whenever I have a project like that, I have my, all my patterns on my computer. Mm. I chart them Ravelry all. or no. or on your own? Yeah. On my own computer. Okay. okay. I chart everything. Okay. I find a chart is so much easier to work with. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I've designed sweaters for myself. Mm. Irish knits I love. But those are the most engaged. I mean, mentally, that's mm -hmm. what is the most engaging for you, where you feel like you're firing right. away. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know. Socks are yeah. great. Yeah, they are. They, you take them right now. I'm doing a pair of thigh-high socks oh my from God. one of my granddaughters. Wow. That's her request. Of course it is. <laughs> last, last year, her request was the... The mermaid tail. Oh, very, God. very in vogue. The mermaid. Did you do the mermaid tail? Of course I did. Oh my gosh. Uh, and, and what was it in sea foam? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and she uses it all that, the time. That's not love. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh my, all, my, all of our kids have wardrobes because that's what they get for Christmas. Yes. There's one specific 
They don't get to pick it. I do. You do. Yep. Yes. They get to request. Yeah, I get Submit, a request occasionally. Uh, okay. My grandkids, I, I said to them very, quite a while ago, I said, I'm not going to knit you anything else until you ask. Okay. And so I have a couple of them who ask. Madison That's says, nice. Grammy, I love your socks. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one Connor wanted. I made a sweater for him, the inter, the interlock sweater. Oh and Connor yeah. Connor fell in love with it. You loved it. So I made him one. And you know, I, you, you know their taste. You know their color preferences. Mm -hmm. You know what they. And so it, it's even better because you can tailor it to their well, preferences, right? Connor came down to visit us when we were on vacation on St. Martin's. Yeah. Like you need a sweater on St. Martin's, right? We got we met him at the airport, and so what is funny. he wearing? His sweater. His sweater to St. Martin's. So all places. when he got ready to go home, he put a sweater on. I said, Connie, you don't need that down here. He said, no, but I love it when I walk through the airport and everybody says, where did you get that sweater? Oh, <laughs> it's from you. Oh, well, well, thank you so much. And, and Harry, I feel like you, you feel the same way about about the crafting and, and oh, yeah. yeah, and it keeps you. It pays the bills. That's true. I wish my knitting paid the bills. <laughs> no, not the knitting. The store pays the bills. Fair. I won't, I won't knit for other people, basically. Yeah. You know, not for pay. What I do, yeah, I do out of love. You do out of love. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I can tell you, I love your shop. I love meeting you both. Thank you so much for your time. And we're going to do a little tour. And um, if people want to find you and they're not in the area, um, do you have a website that they yep. can look at? Or, and is it wonderful things? It's or? wonderful dash things.com. One, wonderful dash things.com. Okay. Yep. Um, are you on any of the social media or it's strictly through the. <laughs> I That's have okay. a well, Facebook page, but I don't do anything Yeah, we'll, with it. we'll find you through your website, <laughs> and, and people will seek you out, and I'm sure... Um, Word of mouth has been the best advertising yep. since we've been here. You know, everybody says... <laughs> they, they all think we're nuts. But that's all right, too. Know. Yeah, some of them know you, have, you know what? I think a little bit of nuts should be in everyone. Well, they love it because that's his summer car out there. 1978. Oh, that's his car. Oh, I'll, I'll do I the... have a 1970 Pontiac Le Mans convertible, oh my which is canary yellow. I love it. And okay. in the summertime, that's what we're in. Well, come <laughs> come to Wonderful Things and, and chat with Harry and Deb and... Um, all the yarns here. We're gonna take a little tour. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. You. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Just here we are. Right this is uh, super bulky. Okay. Baby alpaca grande. Mm -hmm. And then Montana was another one. Montana. Okay. Oh, this is a. Oh. Yeah. This is a five ball shrug. That's, baby I alpaca. love, oh, this is, oh my God, this is so drapey and soft. <gasps> I love shrugs. Actually, I should tell my mom, my mom loves shrugs too. Yeah. I'll have to, maybe this is the next one I make for her. Two, three hours to make it, really. And we, well, we should talk about a uh, non-wool yarn because she's allergic to oh, wool. Well, that's alpaca. I know, we're yeah. going to, we'll, we'll, we'll find something for her. Okay, okay. very good. Yeah. Right. Very good. And now, yeah. okay. This, this is, uh. The baby yarn and cotton right in here. Okay. Okay. Baby yarn and cotton. Okay. So anyone with some wool wool aversions can find their their right. heaven here. Wow. I told you about the price lists are posted. Yep. On yep. The post. Perfect. This is okay. The Felting the area. felting area, very yeah, all nice. All kinds of needles. And oh, and kits. roving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tons of. Well, we don't have tons now, but we had generally forty, mm -hmm. maybe some different colors of roving. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. And then, oh, what's this back here? What am I looking at? These. Oh, these. Oh, those are. Beans. Yeah, we can't get these anymore. These, these are our um, afghans. Kits. Afghan kits? Yes, yes. What? Yeah. Oh my that God. makes an afghan and we'd, we'd wind this for you if you bought it. Wow. You know? That's immense. Oh we'd, my God. We'd, we'd wind it. Do you match these yarns together no, to make the no, kit? These, it comes these already. Came as a kit. Okay. 
They each have a name. Okay. You know, like, this is October. Okay. Oh, my, well. Wow. No, anyway. Okay, yeah, very all, good. They all have names. Very good. And this is the orphanage where everything the is The orphanage. Price. Okay, so first, yarn orphanage. Right. Okay, and so how did, so we talked a little before about how one yeah, comes these are to be in the outs. orphanage. Yeah. Or true orphans. True orphans. Yeah, true orphan would be uh, some, I don't see any. Well, yeah, the Lopi there is a true orphan because the Lopi, Lopi, is, Lopi is in the line, but that happens to be a single, you know? Oh, so yeah. Here. You <clears> never <throat> know what you can find back here, huh? No, we, we have uh, scarf kits that work. Ooh. You know. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay. These, 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 these sheriffs. Ooh. These are scarf kits right in here. Oh, scarf kits. Very nice. Yeah, very Great. Nice. Okay. Oh. One of my favorite. <gasps> nice. Oh, that's gorgeous. They were 60 something and now they're half that. That's. Oh, I'm going to have to come back here and look at this colorway too. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Very good. And then sock yarn. Yep. Socks are big. Oh, yeah. You for know? sure. My favorite is the alpaca socks right here. Wow. What is this? This is... No, that's another one. That's another one. Yeah, that's not... Oh, oh here. Yeah, that's... Alpaca socks. This yeah, is it. Yeah. Wow. No. Okay. And then, of course, we got the jump in the Ooh. Ooh. Kits, yeah. Okay. Up the stairs. Oh wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this is the fancy yarn, you know. The fancy yarn, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh go. my goodness yep. gracious. This is a sparkly, sparkly situation. Smoochie. How adorable. Cashmere's and mohairs. Yep. You know. yep. Some of them. Yep. This is our best selling mohair ever. Oh, what's that? This is gossamer. It's what? mohair and metal. I cannot believe this is yep. knitted. Wow. So, yep. That's 50 <sighs> stitches stocking at. Wow, wow, wow. This is just, this is beautiful. Yep. Takes two of those. Two, only two? Two of those to make. To make only that. two of these. Yep. There are, I think, 20 To make or this. Like that. 28 a piece. And this is just the softest thing. Okay, wow. Okay. Okay, then Got down the hallway. Here. Yep. Oh, wait, what's this here? The. Oh, that's sock. This is sock. This is all still sock. Okay. Isn't, it, isn't this a neat way of selling sock? Oh. <laughs> you, there's a hole in there. I've oh. seen this uh, concept before, yeah. right? With the, That's great. Frolicking I love feet. that. Yeah. Frolicking feet. Yeah. How great is that? Yeah. This used to be, we used to have this whole room oh, and with nothing but scarf yarn in it. Oh. It was just tons. We, we had about about five sheets of, 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 of yarn mm. in this room. There wow. That, that, that many different yarns. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That would be 250 different yarns in that room. And this is some tweeds and some, I don't know, chunkies. Ooh, I like you know? the tweeds and chunkies. Yeah, both <gasps> tweeds behind me. And Manos del Uruguay. Yeah, 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 oh, man, you have a lot oh, of that. Oh, that's great. <gasps> oh, man, this is where the I'm going to be hanging out. Mushushi is nice, too. Ooh, I'm into that one. Okay. Yep. Wow. There's uh, 400 and 460 yards. 460 yards, my yeah. goodness. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yep. All right. Yeah, this is also infamous. Great. Wonderful. And? Yeah, where, where else do we go? Over here. We, this is the worsted room. The worsted room. You get the uh, cascade models and Plymouth in here. Okay. Yeah. So popular for sweaters yep. and... Right. All sorts of warm things. Yep. Okay. And All then right. This is the oh, wow. 
Sport weight room. Oh, that's right. Sport weight room. Yep. So you really, so you really uh, split it out by weight. Yeah. The rooms. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um. Okay. Oh, Mal, you have a lot of monos. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And and uh, Malagasy too. Mmm. Wow. And needle. You guys have so many needles. Just yeah. walls and walls. So you had Addie's, and then in the front you had the the Knitter's Pride and uh, Chagu, you said. Yeah. And then those are new. Oh, which ones are these? I'm, I think they're dreams, too. These are dreams? Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think these are dreams, too. Okay. But they're new, a new ones. Okay. Wow. Look at that little baby sweater. <laughs> I love, oh my gosh. This is, this is probably a good little intro to color work, doing mm -hmm. something like this. Cool. Awesome. Okay. All right. And then of course we have, I mean, this is obviously oh, the, there's, there's oh, my Swift. <gasps> here's, here's the Swift. With the um, skinny arm. Oh, so this would be, okay. So this came from the the um, what's it called? This the swift the not the swift but the part that's feeding this, and then it wraps around. Right. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Skinny yarn on this to either work from it or to. You can work it. directly from this. Oh, yeah. That's so neat. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And that's Ripley, right? Yep, Mr. Ripley. Mr. Ripley. Okay. And then we oh. have, like I say, about 200 or so different craftsmen. Mm. 200 different. And where do they, where do from they? From all over the United States. All over the U.S. Yep, from Alaska to Florida, from Maine yep. to California. Maine to California. Yep. Goodness. Those are from California. <gasps> and the the swim chimes are from Maine. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at these wind chimes. <gasps> that company is out of business right oh, now. Oh no! Yep. I don't know why you can then. Yep. Jeez. Yep. And they're going, they're going. Well, thank you so much. This is such an amazing tour. Everyone, come to wonderful things in the Berkshires. <laughs> you will not want to leave. I may not. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>